All right. So, well, welcome everyone. I think we'll have some others joining us as we go, but I don't want to uh, start too late. Uh, my name is Deborah Marin. I'm the executive director of the Jack McGovern Coats Disease Foundation. And we are delighted uh, to welcome you to our very first of our uh, webinars for our Coats disease community. Um, we are, uh, the, this evening's uh, program is how to get Coats disease awareness day recognized in your state. And we want to thank you for joining us and for your interest in this topic. And our goal is that at some point we will have Coats Disease Awareness Day recognized in every state of the country. So I'm very grateful to you for taking this time this evening for this presentation to hear from those presenters who have been successful in getting this recognition in their own states. So um, a little housekeeping. We'll hear from three presenters, Ed McGovern, founder and parent uh, from the state of California, Elkie Namola, parent and of um, Jackson, and she is in Virginia, and Manda Buck, parent of Caden and in South Dakota. So we'll start with Ed, and we can um, do a question and answer after the three presenters are have completed with their remarks. So you can either use the chat function and ask a question or you can raise your hand and we will call on you. But we will hold the question and answer component of the program until after our three presenters. They may be answering some of your questions along the way. So let's get started. Uh, so this is an actually chronological order of the state recognition. And first I'd like to introduce Ed McGovern, who is um, the father of Jack, who you see here. Uh, he is founder and he's also the immediate past chair of the board. So Ed, I'd like to turn it over to you now. Thank you. Great, thanks Deborah. Um, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, my name is Deborah said I'm Ed McGovern. I'm Jack's uh, dad. Um, uh, I would like to just say thanks for your interest in doing this. Um, at, at a very high level, it is not a difficult thing to do. Uh, I think each of us who will uh, go through our um, experiences with you tonight um, found it to be a relatively easy, painless, and um, in, in some ways educational too. Um, so um, so um, I wanted to say it's not a hard thing to do. It won't take a lot of your time. We're all here to help you. I think we've got you know, packets together that will be very helpful to you if you decide to take this on. And uh, we'll be there with you every step of the way. So let me just tell you a little bit. I know you've heard Jack's name. You saw a picture of him. Uh, Jack is uh, now 27 years old. He was diagnosed when he was 11. Uh, just so a little bit about uh, his history. Uh, he had, it was just in his left eye. Um, he had a couple of laser surgeries, uh, drug therapy. He had uh, a physical surgery to remove some scar tissue. Uh, his um, eyesight fortunately got a little bit better, but he still got a blind spot in that eye. And doctors say, he always will unless we're able to do something uh, super in the future where we can get our children's uh, eyes repaired um, in some way. Um, but it never stopped him. He played high school and college sports uh, and now, um, you know, is uh, working and uh, it's, I'm very proud of him. He's a great, a great uh, kid and I'm sure you've probably seen pictures of him. Um, so uh, the first thing I'd say is, um, how did I do it in California? Uh, well, I contacted uh, uh, a state senator, uh, state senator from our area. California has two houses, the Senate and the Assembly. And I decided to contact this senator. I, I actually knew him. Uh, he knew me and he knew Jack. Uh, so that made it a little bit easier. Um, and really, it took probably two to three months for us to put the language together, um, uh, that won't um, 
uh, shouldn't be the case if any of you decide to take it on because we've now sort of copied that uh, language and in, in, um, in, as you'll hear in Virginia and in South Dakota, um, we've uh, duplicated it uh, to a great deal of uh, degree. Uh, we picked August 17th as Coach Disease Awareness Day. And we'd like, one thing we'd ask is for you to ask for that date. So we're uniform in all the states with August 17th. There's really, frankly, no significance to August 17th other than when we did it, when I did it uh, with Senator, um, his name is Jerry Hill. When I did it with Senator Hill, it was a date that was convenient for him. It was also a date that was convenient for, for my Jack because um, he was uh, in, in between his junior and senior year of college. And so he was home um, uh, for, the, uh, for August 17th and it worked with his schedule and worked with Senator Hill's schedule. So we actually made a whole day of it. We went to Sacramento where that's the state capital in California. And um, uh, Jack was on the floor when they voted to approve the resolution, he met, you know, all the senators. It's it's a very non-controversial thing. So um, uh, this was this was one that was uh, easy. There were, weren't um, uh, political differences about it, and I would imagine it'll be the same for all of you when you do it. Um, and so, uh, uh, let me just walk you through the steps of how we did it. Uh, uh, first. I would talk to find out who your state representatives are, either uh, if you have a two house um, legislature, uh, you can pick um, uh, somebody. If you know them, that's even better. I would call their office, email their office um, and ask to speak to one of the aides. Uh, we will give you a packet of information about Coates disease, uh, what, the three resolutions from the three states that have done it already and ask them if they'd be willing to author a resolution making August 17th Coates Disease Awareness in your state. Um, it'll probably um, you know, take a little bit of time for them to go through their, their internal process, but uh, if you can um, get it started uh, and they agree to do it, um, I would encourage you to ask to, you know, to be able to come to the Capitol on August 17th if they're in session and uh, present, um, and you'll hear from uh, 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 from Elke uh, on how she did that, and and then uh, uh, Amanda did a little bit a little bit different process, but it's all generally the same thing. Um, and I would say um, uh, once once you do that and you get a bunch of pictures, uh, obviously send them to the foundation, and we'll put them up all over our our um, website and our and through our social media and, and make sure everybody knows that uh, in your state, uh, as a result of your efforts, that you were able to do it. So I guess I'll, I'll stop there um, and uh, just say thanks again. Um, uh, up on the screen now is the resolution and the words that um, were adopted in California. And again, it'll be very similar to what you see for Virginia and for South Dakota. So with that, uh, I just say again, thank you. Uh, I'm here to help, uh, here to be a resource. And um, uh, at the end, you'll get my contact information so you can message me directly or call me directly about it. Thanks again. That was great, Ed. Thank you so much, really appreciate that. Great information. And now I'd like to turn it over to Elfie Namola who is um, living in Virginia and was successful in, in getting this recognition in her state. So Elke, turning it over to you. All right, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. Hi, my name's Elke Namola. I'm from Virginia and my son Jackson um, was diagnosed at the age of two. <clears throat> um, he ended up um, very lethargic and um, in a lot of pain. And so when we took him, um, he actually was admitted into the hospital and that's how he got diagnosed with Coates disease. Um, <clears throat> but he didn't give us any rhyme or reason that um, he was missing. Um, laser and cryo and 
um, he still he has no vision in that eye. In that eye, the eye is actually um, shrunk, and his eye stays closed most of the time um, right now. But it, it it has not stopped him at all. He um, lives a full life. Um, we are actually I'm sitting in the parking lot because um, he has a scrimmage at 6:30 with an AAU basketball team that he absolutely loves. Basketball is his sport. Um, as far as the uh, Coach Disease Awareness Day. When I heard that the Jack Montgomery and Coach Disease Foundation um, had designated that day, I thought it was a wonderful idea. And I thought, how can I do that here in Virginia? Um, when Jack Jackson just hit his 10 year anniversary, um, he, since he's 12 now, he hit his 10 year anniversary um, of Coach Disease um, in this past December. Um, <clears throat> And we've done several awareness events because I'll never forget the doctor saying, um, I bet you if you go back in, in pictures, you'll see a glow in his eye. And I just thought how something simple, we have to get that message out to the community. I mean, when you're raising awareness about Coates disease and the, and the um, glow in pictures, you're raising it about, you know, 16 other eye um, disorders. So um, how can we as parents help spread this, this word? And so I approached a... Um, local delegate. Our um, general assembly is made up of two, um, one Senate and then the House of Delegates. And so I reached out to a delegate to see um, if he'd be willing to carry it. And we approached him in the fall of 2016, but our generally general assembly session um, is always held. It starts in January and it typically goes through March. Um, so we approached him in the fall. Then he contacted me in January and asked us to present to a rules committee um, or that it was going to be presented to the rules committee. But he really wanted Jackson and I to come and um, present to it. And um, Jackson was eight years old at that time. And um, so we presented to to the rules committee. Of course, it was unanimous, you know, passed there through the rules committee at that time. And um, I see Sarah, I'd sent her some pictures of, um, of our day there that um, when, the day that it got passed. But um, I had several delegates come up to me and just was like, oh my gosh, he did so good. He has a bright future. He could even be a politician. I wouldn't want to run against him, you know, just very supportive of Jackson and I. And then in February, they invited us back to the General Assembly to, to actually watch it, to sit in the gallery and watch it go through the process and be voted on. And as a delegate um, presented it to the floor, um, he, you know, gave us a shout out because we were there in support of it. But um, we actually have, um, <clears throat> I know coach disease is very rare, but we actually had three within three patients within 20 minutes of each other. Um, <clears throat> so I had another parent there with me um, that her son had coach disease too. Um, so that was helpful, but um, it passed unanimously and I can't tell you what a great experience it was. Jackson, I said was eight. He's in school learning about rules and laws and government. And it was just the best experience. I mean, what what better experience can you get to teach your kid about laws and rules than to go to the General Assembly and watch something that you passed um, or have asked someone to pass for you? Um, it was a great learning experience for me too. I love to watch it, um, but it really is a simple process. And most local delegates and senators are happy to carry something like this. Um, you know, it's not like Ed said, it's not controversial at all. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions um, and help with anyone. You can get my phone number or email. Um, like I said, Jackson lives every day full of life. He has the greatest personality. And um, I asked him on the way here what coach disease um, going through that process meant to him. And um, he just said it was he. <coughs> He felt very supported by the community and it just brought his confidence up. And he said it was just the best experience for him um, to go through that process. So, but I'm happy to answer any questions to anyone um, that may have it. Great, Elkie, thanks so much. And uh, that's a great point about what an educational process it is uh, mm -hmm. to go through for, and wonderful for your son. I bet he'll never forget 
that whole process. <laughs> yeah, right. not a lot of people can say they have a day after them, you know, yeah. so. <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you so much, Elkie. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Amanda Buck, who is the mother of <laughs> Hayden. And, um, and she is in South Dakota. So I'm going to turn it over to Amanda. And let me get you unmuted. Hey guys, Amanda, I'm from South Dakota. My son is Caden. Um, he was seven months old at the time of diagnosis. Our process was a little different. Um, he woke up one morning with this yellow glow in his pupil and I took him to his pediatrician. His pediatrician sent us to an optometrist that day and the optometrist confirmed that there was indeed a mass and that his retina was detached. So she gave us a referral for the very next day to go to the U of M in Minnesota. Well, there, the specialist there pulled his dad and I aside and said, we, we have no idea what this is. We have never seen this before. And they wanted to do an exam under anesthesia to get a closer look at his eye. So we, we went ahead and did that. And after that exam, the head ophthalmologist came to us and said, it's either one of two things. It's either it's showing markers for retinoblastoma and also Coates disease. Um, and they said due to the rarity of it, um, all from all the scans and tests that the only option available at the time was to have his eye removed. Um, so we, we opted to do that and we donated his eye for research along with some spinal fluid, um, which was pretty cool all in all. Um, so unfortunately, not a lot to report there as we didn't do any treatments for him, but now Caden is four. Um, he's got a prosthetic eye. He prefers life without the eye. Um, really, I don't, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> it was just a whirlwind. Um, and we, we had that eye sent off for a pathology. Even the pathology report came back and said, um, and I quote these, this incredibly interesting case. Um, and the pathologist noted markers for retinoblastoma, but it held more markers for Coates disease. So they just went ahead with the Coates disease diagnosis. Um, I then reached out to Know the Glow and Know the Glow um, got me in touch with the Jack McGovern Coates Disease Foundation. And they kind of put the bug in my ear about this Coates Disease Day. Well, I thought, same thing as Elke, what can I do? You know, so I started doing some research and some homework. And I found out that in the state of South Dakota, you've got to go through the governor's office to get this Coates Disease Day recognized as a proclamation. Um, so being how this is being recorded, what you do for South Dakota is you go to governor.sd.gov, then you go to contact, then proclamation, then request proclamation. Um, and then they'll give you a template for what you need and then you can type in everything that you need to type in or um deborah from the foundation helped me do mine um the time for approval varies um for the state of south dakota they prefer it um the further out the better but they approve your proclamation request closer to the date requested um mine took, I want to say about six months to get it completely done um, from the time of submission to the time when I got the proclamation in the mail. Um, overall, very simple for South Dakota. Just it's all online. There's really not a lot to it. Um, so yeah, that's 
yeah, see there. And then it goes through the Secretary of State as well. Um, yeah, I really don't have much. Um, I think I'll hand it back over now. Great, Amanda. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your presentation. And I, I think that's a beautiful proclamation <laughs> that they do in South Dakota. So um, we want to give people an opportunity to ask questions. There is some uh, key information we want to make sure we share with you. and We'll go through that and then open it up for questions and answers. So on the application, be sure to select organization and not individual under the proclamation information section. And we can provide uh, copy paste content for the application. Uh, the ones that are online, for example, uh, if the application is online, we can fill it out for you and use your information as a requester from your state. And um, Amanda mentioned that I helped her with that. Uh, she was the official um, requester, uh, but I was, um, I kind of provided her some content for the online form. And just please make note of my um, email, Deborah Marin at curecoats.org for information to share and be happy to work with you on it. And then please remember, as everyone has mentioned, each state is different. The proclamation requests are reviewed and processed at various times and, and speeds throughout the year. Um, it, different states have different deadlines for this. The first place to begin your state's process is to contact your state representative to identify which department handles proclamation requests. So um, this is the, also the information you will be uh, most likely asked for in the application process. So our foundation information, our address, phone number, our website, our um, nonprofit employer identification number and the date that we were founded, which was 2006. And we are here to help. This is the information for, for myself and for Ed, the founder, uh, Elke and Manda. And um, we also want you to know that we will have information up on our website and we will be following up with everyone after the, this presentation. Um, we'll, we're still compiling the materials and we'll have everything ready by about this time next week, if not earlier. And we will send an email to everyone who has registered for this presentation that the materials are ready um, and then we'll send a link so that you can use, you can access it very easily. And again, please don't hesitate to reach out to us if there's anything that we can do to help. So let me open it up to questions. Um, I don't see any hands raised. You can do that. Or if, if um, and I don't see anything in the chat. Are there any questions? If you raise your hand, I'll unmute you. Deborah, I, this is Sarah. I can't find my hand, so I'm just gonna. <laughs> it's under question. reactions. <laughs> find oh, your hand under okay. reactions, I but Sarah, you I'm, can speak. Go yeah, ahead. I think I'm, it's because I'm sharing my screen. Um, so I had a question, and this is for either Amanda, Alki, or Ed. Um, when you say the process for, for some, I know it took six months, others it took two months. Um, how much of that time would you say was put into the actual effort that you put in versus waiting for the government? Um, so, I mean, when you really thought about how much time did you spend six months or did you spend the time it took to complete the application and get the process started? And then it was kind of a waiting game. Elky. My, <clears throat> my process, it was more waiting on the government. I mean, they did have to send it to their legal team, like the uh, resolution for them to go over. Um, they sent it to their legal team. I And then I had actually sent it to um, Jackson's pediatrician. My I've had glasses since I was two, so I'm going on 40 years of having the same optometrist. I think I was his first patient, but um, I sent it to him and Jackson's ophthalmologist and we came together um, to make our own Virginia um, 
one, but I'd say it was more, I mean, it didn't take any, a lot of time on it. They sent it to their legal time. It was more of a waiting game. Okay. I, I was just trying to give everybody kind of an idea. I don't want them to feel I think, overwhelmed that they're going right. to do and I, and I think um, that it depends on the state, like, and when the, like, General Assembly meets, like, I know ours meets um, for, like, the winter session, they start in January, so I think a lot of that is um, the waiting game, too, because, like, I contacted them in the fall, and they're, like, getting all their, um, their agenda, or their calendars together, and what they're going to um, actually talk about in the General Assembly, so I think it depends on when um, the sessions meet, so. So let me, uh, I will, let me just echo what Elke said. It was more waiting on, um, uh, on the government side of things than it was time that I took. Uh, and, and so it, it really isn't a, a ton of time that you are gonna have to invest in this. It's you know, asking them to do it, giving them copies of, of what have been done in other states and uh and then you know working with their schedule um you, you don't necessarily i don't know if elke if you did it if they passed it on august 17th california did um and so that's you know we were working on a date when they could we knew it was going to come before the the senate and you know we could get jack there but you don't have to actually get it done on the 17th, just get it done whenever it's convenient for them and have them designate the 17th as Coast Disease Awareness Day. So if they can get it done in March or June, um, that, that's fine. Um, and if you can make uh, you know, a day of it or a half a day of it and that's convenient for you and the, your representative, do that. Don't, you don't have to actually get it done and voted on on August 17th. So I want to be sure everybody understands that. Right. Um, at ours did it just did it through the General Assembly and it got passed. Um, like it went through the House and then it had to go through the Senate and then it got passed, I think like in April sometime. But um, I actually did an awareness event on August 17th. We did a um, GLOW fun run um, in our community and inside YMCA. And the delegate that carried it actually came and presented me with a framed copy of the resolution. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. And Manda, did you want to comment? I do. Um, mine is actually the same. It was more a waiting game. Um, since mine was online, I think we got it done in what, two days? Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. just from passing <laughs> everything back and forth, you know, and getting everything typed in and submitted. And then it was just waiting on the government. Um, and then also another thing for South Dakota, um, I did find out that if you want it recognized every year, you have to resubmit every year. Um, you, it doesn't just stick. Um, so I will be resubmitting um, these proclamations religiously um and hopefully they kind of get the point that hey you know maybe we should make this yearly <laughs> um i'm gonna be persistent you know um but yeah that's just kind of a, a neat little thing i found out about south dakota um so if hey, anybody um, is i have a question like ours was passed like august 17th 2017 and then every year after that could you do that like no. then you wouldn't have to no no I okay. asked them about that and they said no unfortunately these proclamations don't just stick um you've got to go through and resubmit them every year so hopefully they get the point you know and I've also suggested hey you know can you guys help us make this nationwide you know but they said it's just too rare of a disease there's really nothing known about it to do something like that so, but and they also said until there's more states on board, then they're not even going to consider it. So if we can get more states on board, that would really help South Dakota a lot. Great. Are there any other questions? 
You can find the hand raise under the reactions <laughs> at the bottom of your page of your screen. Any other comments, uh, final comments from the presenters? I just say again, thank you all for you know showing up and giving us your time tonight. And please reach out to any of us. We are we're happy to help you in your state. Um, and uh, um, you know it's a it, it really is a you know a tight knit community and happy to uh, help any of you in any way possible. Thanks, Ed. And uh, so we will be getting the materials up on a website. We'll follow up with everyone who registered. We will send you the link. And just so you know, in the meantime, you can get started, even though you might not have the proclamation in, in hand from our website. Um, you can start your research if you're interested in doing it and um, find out who, what the process is in your state and who should receive the information or, or uh, whether or not it's submitted online. And um, so you can get started on that process as, as soon as you want. And we will have the materials ready for you to complete the process by the middle of next week. And again, as Ed said, please feel free to contact any of us if you have any information or questions or um, any, anything that we can do to help you with the process. So on behalf of the Jack McGovern Coast Disease Foundation, I wanna thank you all. Thanks to each of our presenters, to Ed and Amanda and Elke. Um, thank you all for being here and for listening. We, will, uh, we are recording this, so you'll have access to the recording if you wish. And um, I wish you all good health and a great evening and stay in touch. Thank you very much, everyone.